And welcome, y'all, or welcome back to Conversations with Dean. I am Dean, baby. And across from me, y'all have heard him on the Anchor Machine. You have seen a previous Conversation with Dean episodes uh, where I speak with this man. I also speak of this man. Um, Listen, his parents named him Kevin Duffy, but we happen to call him Duff where I come from. Hey, to the people once again. We got Big Duff here, baby. What it do, hey, son? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me back. Oh, Thanks bro, for having me back. You Last time I was on the show, it was under like it was a little bit different circumstances, but we're we're all about the fun today, man. Absolutely, but still, people can go check that out. Um, that is going to be an audio episode of Conversations with Dean only, wherever you um get your podcasted needs. We actually, me and Duff, had like really good conversations in regards to um mental health um his yeah. mental health his uh you know his battles you know uh with it during it because of some fucking stupid see you uh see you next see you next tuesday bitch uh you know how this goes <laughs> aka cunt bitch but you know we're not gonna we're not gonna get into the scallywags and the horse nah Nah. It's all about laughs because that's what you do. You bring laughs. You know what I mean? Obviously, especially, you know, speaking on earlier, what we spoke a little bit about, like, you know, comedians, uh, excuse me, well, like, you know, you having, like, you know, battling through your mental health issues. You know, a lot of comedians, they have a lot of darkness to them, which is why they're able to bring some of that to the stage and then shape it in a way that everyone can laugh at, but also everyone can relate to as well. That's what yeah. makes the shit really funny. It's like, oh, yeah, I, <laughs> I know what you're fucking talking about. Yeah, man. Let's talk, so you as a open micer, uh mm -hmm. also to you you besides being an open micer um you are also a not a feature but what is it that they would call you like you host uh, a host yeah as of right now yeah, you yeah. are host um you damn near got 20 minutes which is then soon going to put you into that like feature flex like all right we can do this goddamn thing how the fuck do we get to 20 minutes stuff how do we like and because people don't even understand how many sh how many jokes that you would like talk about and write and you probably threw away like fuck it Maybe you'll come back to it. Maybe you won't. But how do you get to 20 minutes? Dude, it's all about like trial and error, especially when you start out. Like, right. I can't tell you how many things I've written where I'm like, yo, this is going to fucking kill. And I right. get up there and people are looking, looking at me like, yo, what's this guy's fucking problem? Like, is he is like, is he like wearing helmets? Like, right, right, right. Is he like, fucked I don't up know. Shit. Like, is he fucking stupid? Like, I mean, yes, yeah. a little bit, but dude, it's all it's all like trial and error. Um, so like. Speaking of the trial and error, though, what is your writing process? Like, I, I, what, how the fuck do you do it? Like, does something happen and you just jot it down and you got to come back to it? Like, do you have to have a little bit of libations in you to kind of get it on? What is it? Do you have a specific time that you only write? Like, talk to me. So, I mean, I usually write like when I'm done with the day. Like, if I have an idea or something, I'll like, I'll throw it in the notes on my phone. Okay. Um, I like, I don't know, like the other day, like last Sunday, um, I just took like a walk around my neighborhood and that I like, I had an interaction that was so unique. Right. I was like, I can't not write about this some way, somehow, like this lady stopped me on the street and she said, uh, excuse me, sir, can you smell these two candles for me? It's to support kids who are bullied for their height. Wait, what? That's what I said. It's was, it was like she said it's to support kids who are bullied for their height. Just smell the candle. Don't donate no money. Don't even give a quarter. Yeah, no. I was just like, what did those chloroform? I, that's I don't know. I mean, it was like in in broad daylight. Like, I mean, it's kind of flattering, I guess. But <laughs> you say walking on the street, she was like, you know what? I want all of that right there. I'm a fucking yeah. <laughs> shit out of like, this motherfucker. He won't have a right. bit of a clue. But I looked so, at her. I was like, "No." Was like, what did she say after that? She got like she got upset, dude. She was just like, "Oh, so you you're prejudiced against people who are short." And I looked at her. I was like, "Bitch, what the fuck team do you think I'm playing for? I'm five foot eight. <laughs> But bitch, I'm not a part of the fucking six foot club, but I do have. Yeah, another. like that's why. I mean, after that, like I walked away, and at first I was like a little, a little chapped about it. But then I was like, dude, this is gonna be great once I figure it out. Right. So. So all right, I have an, I have something for you. So when you're writing though, right, and you like mm -hmm. that experience, do you write your jokes verbatim? Like, do you write the joke verbatim how you want to tell it, 
or do you start telling the joke and then you learn how you want to tell the joke? I'll usually like in my room, I'll start like standing up, walking around and telling it. Okay. And then that like, that helps me free up my mind a little bit. Okay. And then I'll lay, I'll like sit down on my computer and start typing it out. And I try to get it as close to verbatim as possible. Mm. But I'm also like, I mean, I'm very lucky in the sense of like, from when I started, there's been so many people like helping me. Right. Like looking at my shit and being like, yo, Kev, this isn't going to work. You got to change that. Like, I mean, the four or five like headliners, like after shows, they'll just come up and be like, yo, dude, I really like that idea, but change this. I think this will hit better. Right, right, and right. I would say like for the past like four months, I've been going to a writing session um, with this dude that he, uh, he and my brother met like on the, on the cruise ships. Okay. And uh, his name's Johnny Millwater and he's just like fucking brilliant. Okay. Um, and there's a group of us that go in like, well, bring in and he's a comedian. Work. Yeah. He's been doing it 20 years. Okay. Yeah. And now is he, is he like, uh, is he so like with comedians, right? Because there are comedians who may not be like really known, but they still make they still make a hell of a fucking living. Yeah, so is yeah, he a headliner? Is he yeah, like a club a, headliner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I got. He's you. he's a, yeah, he's a serious headliner. Um, and like I always tell like everybody who's like thinking about getting help from uh, like a headliner or anybody really, but especially like Johnny, he. Um, I tell everybody, like, I think about a joke the way, like, just like a, a simple machine. Like, you know, you got, like, the fulcrum, you got, like, the weight there, and you got the lever. Right. He thinks about it like a pocket watch. And, like, the inner workings of a pocket watch. You know what I mean? Like, Explain and, that to those who aren't in that. Like, you know, break it. Like, okay, well, you were about to. I'm sorry for cutting you off. Continue. No, you're good. And, like, so if I bring a joke that's, like, three sentences – He'll like give me his input, and sometimes it'll be like shorter to the punchline, but say mm. exactly what I want to say, and it just hits harder. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. There's not that lull. So how has because like uh, how long have you been doing comedy now for? Five years. Okay. So, so because I'm you know obviously being in this creative space and trying to create content and trying to be seen, you know, one thing that I I typically see in you know, you see of the success, the successful ones is it takes them about seven to 10 years to really fucking like kind of get up there and get your name out there. So now that you got your, you damn near, you got your 20, 20 minutes. Like how, how has, how have you noticed the difference in the way that you can kind of command and control a room now? And then like, for instance, like, and what I mean by that is you may have a set one night that, you know, only calls for you to go, you know, I don't know, seven minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. And since you have 20 minutes of material, you can be into something, kind of read the room and then kind of easily switch to you, but staying in your material and still working on your material. How has that led to some kind of comfort and confidence? Oh, it's, it's great. Like, I mean, last night I did like an open mic. It's five minutes mm -hmm. and I brought something that is like tested and I know works in a majority of rooms and then i'm i brought something that i'm like i've been working on for like the past month right so when i come out i just do the stuff that works just to get everybody kind of warmed up try the new shit see what works see what doesn't and then after that if i have some time i'll just go back to something else like i kind of want to do or haven't done in a while i got you so one thing I've been like, because, you know, I listen to like a lot of comedians and their podcasts and stuff. So something that Burt Kreischer said on the Two Bears, One Cave, it was very interesting. He was talking about specials, Netflix specials, yada, yada, yada. And I guess one of the executives basically told him to put your punchline, like, excuse me, put your put your finisher first in your set. Because people's attention span are shorter uh, in today's day, and especially when you're watching a special. You know what I mean? What they've been noticing on Netflix, I guess, is that, you know, the 27 minute mark is the sweet spot or whatever the case may be. And then you lose. them. Yeah. Have have you heard any of that and has that like you know made you maybe change up how you do certain sets for me nah i mean like uh, the longest set i've done is 15 minutes so 
it's tough for me to kind of put the clothes up. Yeah, I got you. Fuck with your yeah, act like that. I mean, I, but for him, I mean, for him, I kind of get it. Plus, I mean, he's one of like he's a celebrity comic, so he's so good. Right. He could do literally whatever the fuck he wants. His name and, and his people, brand has been built as such. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's just such a strong comic too. Like all those guys, like um and like even like you look at Chappelle, like from how he was like from uh like killing them softly yep. with his jokes, and then you come all the way up to like sticks and stones. Right. Like he's still funny. But that's a completely different kind of vibe. Yeah, but it's like that's more like a TED talk that was funny. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like Dave Chappelle is such a brand on his own that right. people are going to listen. And he's extremely like interesting to listen to. He's a great storyteller. Right. You know what I mean? So that's I mean, that's one of those things like once you get into it for a while, you learn and like you learn what works for you and you learn what doesn't. Like I know for me personally, I'm not an energy guy. Like I'm I got gonna, you. Yeah, I'm not going to go up on stage and Kevin Hart anybody. Right, 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 right. So, oh, uh-huh. yeah. What you? But what are you like? More slow and methodical with your approach with it. Like I'm going to like fucking stab you slowly, just kind of keep stabbing you and stabbing you, and then you're fucking just going to be bursting with fucking laughter once I'm done with you. That's. I mean, that's my goal. Like I'm way I more, way more like Hannibal Burris, I guess you could say. Mm. Just like you can't a be little stupid bit to listen slower. to you then. Yeah, kind of. I got you. I mean, uh... right now. My material, like right now, yeah, is kind of like it's all like clean. It can operate in, I would say, ninety percent of rooms. Like, I got I'm you. Not, I'm not like church clean or anything like that, but I'm like TV clean. So I hear you. It's not like anything that's like crazy, like thought provoking or anything. It's just like my life. Mm. Do you talk about your time when you bouncing? No, that was, not uh, yet, at least. That was very, very funny. Our college times, just because um, I've talked to a few different people. I've talked to 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 Big GC about this. I even talked to um, Saeed about this. Our college time was fucking different. Like whenever I, you know, talk to anybody who went to college or talk to anybody who like you, you know, was even in a fraternity um, or they're in a sorority or if they played sports. And I try to, like, you know, get some camaraderie with them, like, you know, through the college experiences. I realized we went to a different fucking beast. Yeah. Like, yeah, we didn't go to Arizona State, but also, too, Arizona State doesn't have, like, two colleges in a town that one's a state school, one's a private school, and the town is built around it. And then they let the kids do as such. Yeah. You see what I mean? Like, that was a, like, we've had some fucking wild ass times where you even think about the bounce and even you think about like the actual stories on the fucking field yeah, for you to actually fucking dude. get into it could get fucking really fucking weird for you dude, especially your I whole remember. saga with coach lynn <laughs> actually like when i played for him i didn't like him at all that's what i mean yeah as soon as as soon as i did that like one year of like student assistant coaching yeah he was one of my favorite people to hang out with on the staff. Because <laughs> he didn't give a fuck. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, he was, he was like, he's legit, like, super fucking cool. See, I don't know. That was different for me when I did my little um, stint of, of you know, student coaching, uh, student, like, you know, whatever the fuck it was until before I left it because I got another job. Um, yeah. I only I was mostly with the offensive side of the ball. Right. Because I played all. So I didn't really get a chance to deal with him. But those boys on the offense, like. College football coaches, like we, I, because you're playing for them. And then obviously there was certain, you know, you had certain coaches that we would see out of you. We have stories about for the most part, you just like, oh, like you forget that they play ball too. And they're assholes too. Yeah. And they are also piece of shit. like the same way. (laughs) Everybody's a piece of shit. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, dude. Like I remember like when I was playing, I was just like, yeah, these guys are like pro professionals and this and that dude. As soon as I'm in that, like coaching, like the coach's office, dude, different fucking beast and it's hysterical yep talking shit not giving a fuck like the shit like some of those meetings that you would be in when you were just talking about players like it would be fucking 
They'd be like, oh, oh yeah, what about this guy? Oh, fucking sucks. He's oh, never going to oh, be fucking yeah. good. We're trying everything we can, but we got to figure out what is option two because option two is probably going to be one because this guy sucks dick. Yeah. Everybody's like, dude, a stout yeah. judgment. <laughs> So Big Duffy, I don't know if that was you who froze. I think that was Big Duff who froze. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just remove Duff from this from the from the chat real fast. We're gonna keep it going. Duff will Duff will end up coming back, and then Duff is now back. Yeah, you froze up on me a little bit there, player. Was that me yeah. or was that you? No, that was definitely me. I mean, I'm upstairs too. Like ah, on the Wi-Fi and on a bit of an older laptop i was looking up some russian mail order brides one time so that might attribute to that there is oh. <laughs> russian you know that motherfuckers is you can't buy no pussy from russia no more right now well this was a, a few months ago we're banning everything oh okay a few uh, yeah. uh, before everything went down yeah, yeah no it wasn't, gotta, wasn't this week man no no you know what i'm saying you got to fucking support that you know what i'm not even gonna make that joke <laughs> <laughs> Whole different market. Whole different you know market. I mean? Whole different yeah. market. You gotta you, you know what I mean? You gotta support the Ukraine market now. So you're gonna buy some Ukraine pasta. <laughs> oh, <shit. The> only, <laughs> the only ones still there are the men between 18 and 60. So the whole yeah. still gotta make money. <laughs> Did you know completely, does, completely you're, different demographic? Hold on. So I'm we're gonna dip our toes into politics, but like a fuckery part, we're gonna come right back out. But fucking listen. Did you know that because of all the sanctions and all the blocking of everything that we're doing to Russia and, and worldwide as well, and because we removed them from the SWIFT banking system, so like shit like Visa, MasterCard, shit like that doesn't work for them, you know that fucking OnlyFans stars in Russia can't make their bread? Losing their fucking minds. <laughs> I don't know. It's terrible. But it's I, it's like, you know what, because you know Russia is such just like – prudish kind of country shit like that yeah. that i found it funny that when they were even able to operate it only fans over there in fucking russia and then two on top of it it's like they blocked you fuckers from everything like the people didn't even do anything it was putin that's but even the hoes even the hoes can't fucking make money what the hoes do he's out here trying to you know what i'm saying oh dude they are they are fine they i are don't fine. know bro can i bring only fans oh maybe they have a russian Somebody over there in Russia is about to make mad money because all they're going to do is they're going to see everything that happened, like every fucking Western fucking concept. They're just going to make a fucking Russian version. There's going to be a Russian OnlyFans. <laughs> Zitzvia, bitches. I don't, well, I don't know Zitzvia. if they can do that because it's like, isn't Why it not? Like communist? Or like, they don't, they're not no, like, they're it's like, like a, it's a, it's more like a, 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 um authoritarianism rule. Uh, they got, hmm. uh, uh, yeah, so it's like fake fucking democracy. Yeah. All right. Well, still. You see what I'm saying? So, so all I don't know. The, these hoes, the hoes can't make no all money. All those bro. girls, like, I'm, I guarantee you they have stacks of money. Not all these OnlyFans stars make good bread, Duff. Well, that's true. Yeah. Even though the player haters did cover a 69 year old grandmother making cake, and mm -hmm. she's fucking fucking younger dudes, too, bro. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. There's a market for everything. What is your, like, so. Because you're single. Yeah. Like, when you start featuring, you start going on the road, right? If you had, like, a 69-year-old who came to the show, she was decent looking. She <laughs> wanted to smash. <laughs> Would you do it? I mean, I'll never Still say Still looks... Never say like never. She looks good for her age. You see what I'm saying? Not that she's like one of these like wonders, but like, would you do? But she was super cool. I'll never super say never. duper cool. Never say never, but like, uh, I mean, that probably would trip me up a little bit. It's like Tough. you would have to do it for your comedy career. <sighs> I already you have, have to. I have too many of those stories. You need. You can never have enough. I have a question. Speaking of too many of those stories, and this is probably going to be a clip. Can we talk about that one, John, where you drew the line? Do you have a set about her yet? Yeah. <laughs> or maybe, yeah. or maybe this could be this, this could be, this could become your machine story. Like, did yeah. you know the machine story was originally told on the Joe Rogan podcast? And then after that, Joe Rogan, like fucking like was like, listen, Bert, you gotta do this. I think that I think that we need to hear your 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 machine story if this is not already a bit of yours. 
It's not, but like when I feature, it's something I can use because I can kind of crank up the dial a little bit. And as a host, you got to be like super like clean and like, hey, yeah. we're here to have the like, but dude, oh, I remember that. I remember that. That was like when I first got to Schenectady. Like so, I moved so into my place. Are you going to tell the full story for the people? I mean, I can. I can. Let's do, do it. it. Let's it was fucking entertaining. Do it. Fuck, like, let's do it. We're not fucking like, listen, listen, the fucking pod, listen, the Black and the Bird Network isn't fucking so huge that we got fucking hundreds of thousands of fucking listeners. So fucking let's fucking do the damn thing right now. Duff, let's tell us all to the people. Dude, yeah. No, for real. Like, I matched with this girl on Tinder. Watch this goes fucking viral. <laughs> <laughs> you can't fucking use it. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Continue, please. I matched with this girl on Tinder. And this is like height of covid nobody's doing anything and um like i was like oh wow this girl's like super attractive like let's like you know let's chat her up and we start talking and um we end up like talking on the phone that night and she's just saying things like i'm just such a piece of shit like you're not gonna like me this and that i'm like like i don't even know you like there's no way for me to know that it's way too early for the self-deprecation. We don't give a fuck. We're really just in here for the pussy. Like, let's just, yeah, I get you. Uh, you where I was at that time, yeah. Like, uh, Which is fine. I'll keep it real. I'll keep it real. Yeah, like, it's all right. Yeah. And, she, and she knew that. She's like, and I'm like, I just kept asking her, and was like, why wouldn't I like you? And she's like, well, you know, I cheated on my boyfriend, like, with his best friend. I'm like, well, you know, we all that's, make mistakes. That's yeah. That's hilarious. And I was just like, and like, I don't know. It just seemed like she kept telling me all these things that like just seemed so rough, like a rough like way to grow up. So I was like, you know what? Like you and me, will go out to dinner. Just like chill, have dinner, whatever. I do have a, I feel as if we're missing a very vital point of this. Because see, you're skipping a lot of details. And I remember one specific detail. I'm not going to oh, speak. Oh, I'm getting to it. Because I feel as if we talked about this before you went on the date. Like, we tried to get you not to go on the date. It was a dinner. And we all had a conversation. God, you're, right. you're right. No, you're okay. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, well, you can't do this. And you're just like, I don't see why I shouldn't. Uh, you're right. You're right. You're right. I, uh, I'm, I'm getting, like, mixed up, man. I've then had you so do many... it. Then we do another dinner. And then we find out the results. Yeah, like, dude, <laughs> like, I, I've had so many concussions in football, like, all these stories. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All these stories just kind of, like, mixed together. What happens like, when you're a nose tackle? Around. Dude, for real. But <laughs> especially a five foot eight nose tackle where you're crashing into everybody's chest. But, <laughs> you yeah. don't fool me. <laughs> Low man wins. But, Duffy, don't let it don't let it be funny. If Duffy dude, grew up fucking powerlifting, fucking Duffy would probably be an Olympic powerlifter. Duffy's strong as shit. Continue. I'm getting it back. But yeah, no, like we ended up talking on the phone again one night. And she goes, Yeah, like you don't want to go out with me. I'm like, why? She goes, Well, I was in rehab for Xanax and I'm only 23. And I was like, hey, like, you know, people get into like all manner of stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's whatever. Such is and, life. And uh, she goes, like, we talk a little bit more. She goes, yeah, no, you're going to hate me. I'm like, why? She goes, I'm a great cook. I'm like, seems like a good thing. She goes, well, I used to cook crack. <laughs> Listen here, people. Right now we're in the year 2022. This happened in, like, 2020. Yeah, this bitch was still cooking crack. In 2000 and fucking 20. Amazing. Well, I don't know if she was like still cooking at that point, but she's like, Yeah, no, I'm really good at it. Chef boy on crack. Nah, nah, let's not disrespect this bitch in her plate. <laughs> well, either it's way, the Gordon Ramsay of crack. We don't know. <laughs> either way, I'm like, I'm like <laughs> 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. <laughs> I feel. I mean, part of me feels bad for laughing about it, but like, I mean, I I didn't ask. Now that shit funny. I'll give a fuck, bro. <laughs> you shouldn't be doing crack, so I'm not gonna feel bad about making fun of niggas doing crack. I don't well, give she a told, fuck. Like, she told me that, and I was just like, "All right, but you, like, I still think you're attractive." So I was like, "Let's do it." And she like, we talk a little bit more, and 
she goes, yeah, you know, you're really going to hate me. Like, I don't know why you're talking. Hold to me. on. Hold on. I know that this is hold on, Duff. Listen, because the people here are listening and they're just like, did this motherfucker just say, yeah, you cook some crack. It's fine. Like, I still like you. Like, you're cool. Like, so Duff, I... I, I, the conversations were like legit cool. So I was like, <laughs> they were very honest. So I was like, you know what? Duff. Duff. That's a, I mean, that's a positive. No, it's not a positive. Duff. Honestly? You were about to go out with fucking the female version of Walter White. Like, what are we doing? Like, I this did. is 2012. You did? You did? I did. Yeah. Ah! No, like, and I was, ah! I was like, whatever. But what we were like, <laughs> it was at dinner that I got, like, turned off by the whole thing. Oh, yeah. So we're oh, sitting yeah. there, like, eating dinner. And she says, you know, um, I don't know why you're here with me. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, well, one time somebody paid me $20 to pee on me. And I was like, yeah, you know, that's, that's not like cool. That's, that's what, that's what shut me off for the whole thing. That's the, and, and, and I just, we know you're a different Duff now, but yeah. I remember during that, when that happened, I remember being out to dinner. It was me, you, GC, and Justin. You were telling <laughs> GC the story. And I think GC got the story after you went on the date. He did. And I just he remember did. his fucking face being like Duff. We can't, we can't have this. <laughs> hey, we. Well, he was like, he, well, he's kind of was in like my corner. He's like, yeah, man, you can't go out with a girl who gets like peed on like that. And it was you were like, oh, oh yeah, I have a He was he he bypassed it too. Yeah. What the fuck is what you upstate motherfuckers? Like, oh yeah, no, we can forgive crack, but piss, no, we can't forgive piss. Yeah, no, that's gross. Like, Waterworks is disgusting, which I don't disagree with you on, but fuck. <laughs> I remember that, like, Gary, or sorry, GC was like, yeah, man, you can't be going out with girls again. <laughs> so, and I guess to me, that is like, that was the most appalling thing. Like, one, the fact that the fact of the matter that fucking goddamn that that no one was offended of the crack except for me and fucking Justin. Because I remember, because because as you know, Justin don't talk too much. I will tell you he talks a lot because, you know, you know, he actually likes you. Like, listen, let me tell you something. There's a there's a group of friends that Justin asks about all the time. I'm not gonna name those friends' names, but there's a few people, people they probably know, but he just be like, how's this person? How's that person? How's this person? And fucking he always asks about you. So I remember when that shit happened, he was very like, I remember he sat down with you and said, Duff. <laughs> you know, Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. You he's the only person who calls you Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. You, you don't have to do this. You you're better than this, man. You, you, you <laughs> can't do it this, man. Like, <laughs> it ends up being like such a good, like it, it's something oh, that I can take and like if, it's gonna I make can, you like, so much money. Tune. But still, bro, you fucking you have to go ahead. You gotta fucking work it. However, you gotta work it. But you have yeah. to absolutely tell that story on stage. But it was like it to on, me. Son. Like I mean, looking back on it, like if that were to happen now, I'd be like, no. I mean, but I was just like, I was totally different mindset. Oh yeah. At that but that, point. Uh, also, too, I do think, and I, I also blame a little bit of myself on that because I remember during that time period, you were, you know, you're going through. And for people who don't know, he was going through a breakup. Uh, and like, he didn't do anything. He like, he was going through a breakup. If you want to know more about it, go fucking listen to the shit. All I mean, all I'll say about it was a weaker version of myself got taken advantage of, and yeah, I didn't stand up for myself. So it, it like, I ended up having to come home and luckily dean was there and fucking let me tell you something it was a, i fucking and i try listen any 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 bros out there listening i did the bro thing i tried to right. have him drown himself in some pussy and then just hang out all the time and let's just talk about your feelings yeah. that's yeah. all i fucking did and every it time worked, fucking, listen duff would come through and it wouldn't say shit and just kind of just be like, let me just hang out. Okay, fucking just hang out here on the fucking. I don't give a yeah. shit. We just we're gonna fucking do our thing. You're gonna do your thing. You know what I mean? Got Duff high. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I remember that. Yeah. That was, Go ahead, and smoke smoked. this shit, Duff. Go ahead, and smoke this shit. Yeah, I hadn't like, dude, I hadn't smoked in over a year, and I remember <laughs> I took one, I took one rip, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> 
<laughs> I felt like I, I was really, levitating off your couch. I bring that up to say because, like, like, listen here, people, because, like, as bros, as your boy, like, you know, there's always a stigma, like, like, you know, releasing your emotions. I think that stigma has been changing, but there are certain times where, like, you just got to be there for the for the for the boys. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I know there's gonna be people listening, like, you try to have him drown himself in pussy. Yes, I did, because I wanted him to realize one thing. The same way you got that one, you can get whoever you want. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, dude, it was which led actually, him, man. which led him to fucking dealing with the goddamn Gordon Ramsay of fucking of goddamn coke cooking. It's amazing. But as dude, you were it saying, was, I'm sorry. it was like it was <laughs> that was like a like interesting I, dates I've ever been on in my life. It was a even that time period though. When I think of it, like it was a it was a. Like, I very much enjoyed having you around. It sucked that you were around because of those fucking circumstances, but fucking yeah. very fucking great. Like it was, it was, it was fucking dope. It was a fucking had, hell of a time around here. I had a honestly. <laughs> it was a hell of a in time those ten here. months, I had a ton of fun. I remember I could walk to your house. Yeah, yeah, just come through. Yeah, you like, would do. Fucking working out, fucking hanging out, fucking just like like, hey, you want to go to fucking dinner? Yeah, let's fucking go to dinner. Let's fucking yeah, call let's the guy. Let's. Let's fucking got let's head the mafia meeting. You know what I mean? Like it was a it was a fucking you know what? Actually, there like those were a lot of fun too. And are you able to pause this? Wait, pause the recording? Yeah. Uh I can't. I don't have those lowest capabilities. I could take you out of the stream and keep talking and bring you into the stream. Okay. Because well, me, that yeah. those beers are sliding through. Yeah, no, nah, go ahead, do your thing, and I'll fucking go ahead, and I, I got this. So listen here, people. So fucking, let me tell you something. We used to have these fucking mafia meetings. It used to be me, Duff, uh, it would be GC, and it would be GC's bro, right? Actually, Joe. Y'all know Joe. I've actually had Joe on a conversation with Dean. We're going to get Joe back on, especially with everything going on now, because I think everyone needs to learn um, a, a little bit about the deep state. Um in a educated manner um it, it, shit like that and also do how to fucking you know finance it and you know kind of, kind of get your money in order but we used to have these fucking meetings together well not meetings but dinners and they were fucking bonkers let me tell you something uh when you deal with four people who don't give a shit and who are like legit fucking friends as everyone here who's listening who are you exactly know the kind of shit that was fucking going down but during those, I would actually you you were able to kind of see the the comedic background of Duff and the and that comedy shit that he does because fucking Joe would try to fucking come out here with some shit, which I would find funny. No one else would find funny. I would find Joe shit funny, but then Duffy comes with some shit, and it it, it, it was interesting after that. It's like, oh okay, like, this is why you yeah. do that shit. Like you can okay. Oh, you talking why. about you talking about Joe? The mafia, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we yeah, said yeah, Joe's yeah, name yeah. because we can't because Joe has been on just as Joe, but okay. uh, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah. So, so, so it was a. Uh, I was always giving a little uh, insight into our mafia meetings that were. Fun. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, how did we get onto that? Oh, that whole like tangent about that. Day. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like I got to make that a bit, but you have to. I, I will one day when I have the ability to like piece it all together. But I think you could. <sighs> I have to. We have to. I'm sorry here, people. Certain things are for y'all. Certain things are for fucking me. And this one's for me. Listen. You have to. I, once again, I know shit about fuck. I know my elbow from my asshole, especially because of that comedy shit, right? But I feel like you got to start fucking piecing that shit together and trying it at least like y- y- you you got to start trying it. Because that could be something that like you may not play for most rooms, but it should be something that I feel as if it has, it is being actively worked on because the oh, whole I can concept. take that to a club. I, like, if you see I, what I'm saying? I, once I get to the like, once I get to featuring, I could take that to a club. Who else is? But who? Duff, who else is fucking going out with the with fucking crack cookers? And didn't she do the crack too? Your boy, your boy. Didn't is, she that's... do your crack too? Didn't she do the crack? No, I never did. No, not you. I'm talking about her. Oh, oh, oh her. Oh, yeah, I'm sure she did. Exactly. You in 2020 willingly went out with the cracker because you wanted to see the like you gave her the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Think about the print like Duff. That could be Duff. Duff. You gotta fucking do it. Oh, All I'm right. gonna. I'm gonna. You gotta I fucking I I I personally just need that for myself, people. 
Oh, it's gonna be now, once I once I figure out how to nail it down, it, it'll be great. I fucking can't great. wait for that. Um, now something I want to uh, uh kind of get into with you, right? Comedy on a whole, yeah. Fucking fluffy is fucking. He's about to perform in Dodger Stadium. Yeah. <laughs> and then Kevin Hart says he's got something like you know fast approaching. Oh, excuse me, fast approaching. If if and, and, and Fluffy, so before we get to Kevin Hart shit, Fluffy is going to perform in in Dodger Stadium. After that, Fluffy is then go, that that is going to be the special that is taped and released, right? Mm-hmm. Like, where does that put him? He's, where does that? Because I feel as if Fluffy is somebody who does not get his fucking just doing respect. I understand he's not your cup of tea. I right. get it. But when we're just talking on the grand scheme of this mother motherfucking shit, like where does that put him with the all time greats? It has to put him up there. It's Dodger fucking stadium. Oh, it does. It does for sure. Like just because I don't like identify with his his style and his his brand doesn't mean shit. You know right. what I mean? That's that's the thing about comedy. Like it's it's all subjective. So you're not like doing a show at Dodger stadium because you're not like great. You know what I mean? Like everybody, like Kevin Hart catches a lot of hate, but the dude like did a show in like the Philadelphia Eagles stadium. Like it's just like, it's, it's all subjective, man. And like some people fucking hate me when I go on stage, they don't think I'm funny and that's fine. Other people fucking love me. Like last night, I had a really good set. The crowd was a ton of fun. Like they were really into it. And like I had a few people come up to me afterwards and say, like, man, I really enjoyed that. I think that I thought that was great. I was like, you know, thank you. I'll do the same five minutes another place. And like people will be like, yo, get the fuck off stage, bro. Like, we don't give a shit. How do you so <clears throat> How do you handle that, and how do you like so? And then, how do you know when to tweak your material, and when not to tweak your material? So, like, how do you know that that was just like a well? First of all, is there any such thing as a bad crowd? Yes, but that can't be like a catch-all. You know what I mean? Like a lot of like a lot of um, like younger comics, even people like who have been in it a few years, like me. Right. Like we'll go up with stuff that's not like polished or like not ready. And like they think it's funny, but it's just not like it's not ready. You know what I mean? And they'll be like, oh, that crowd sucks. I'm like, that crowd sucks. Like at some point, dude, not every crowd fucking sucks. Uh... Yeah. It's it's like I mean, I have like I have a big advantage now, like doing the writing sessions I do. Um, I get a lot of input from a lot of different comics. So if it's like one phrase that didn't work, I try it a few more times. And if it still doesn't work, then I tweak it. Mm. Like, I don't I don't base my set off of like one show. I got you. Because I because I was like uh recently I was listening to the I Ain't Scared of You, um, the Bernie Mac set. Mm-hmm. On Def Jam because I listened to the background of it. And the background of it that's every the reason he kept saying I ain't scared of you motherfuckers is because everybody was bombing in front of him and getting booed off the stage. So I was just trying to wonder, like, okay, like that shit is kind of happening. The yeah. crowd's supposed to be terrible. You still gotta go up. Like, how how do you even control that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, how do you even control the crowd? Like, like when I like, so for instance, right? So I just want to share something with you real fast. All right. Look at this. Now, this crowd was fucking brutal when he comes on stage, right? So can we just kind of break down how he was able to turn the tide on this? Yeah. Cool. So hold on. Let me just... I'll do my best with it. I'll, I'll see what I uh, what I think at least. Yeah, 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 yeah. So perfect. So let's... I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. I'm going to tell you something straight off the motherfucking press. I ain't coming for no foolishness. And New York, goddamn it, y'all motherfucking women look good. Y'all like a bacon and egg sandwich look good. But I love sex. I love it. Hmm. Can't do shit no more. And I'm blessed. Hmm. 
I'm big boned. I'm so because you got to do the 30 second pauses for YouTube, but this is somebody who doesn't know shit about fuck, right? Yeah. If I was like, tr- and tell me if I'm wrong. So it seems to me that when he first came out, he came out obviously with the confidence, kind of like because I'm I I'm not scared of you folks. I don't give a fuck. I know I'm funny, right? He addresses how unruly they've been, and then goes and then says like I'm not the rest of these motherfuckers effectively, and then kind of goes into his set. The reason I say he goes into his set is because I know this is a joke that he does on the Kings of Comedy. Okay, but it's 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 kind of like a completely different joke. But you you I can see how 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 he's built upon the joke. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like he's yeah, put yeah, like yeah. a few different jokes within the jokes. Yeah. Like that joke is like a a, a a beginning to a bigger one, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. am I wrong in that uh, breakdown or no? Or would you would you say I mean, you kind of agree? The I mean the way I look at it, it's tough for me to like kind of kind of look at it too because I, to me that's Bernie Mac. He did he was doing comedy before I was fucking born and before I even like started agree. to look at the crap. agree. So. I mean, coming out, knowing it's Bernie Mac, you know he's going to fucking, like, be fine, you know? Yes, but this is Bernie Mac back in, like, this is this is Bernie Mac on Def Jam that had multiple artists on, you know what I mean? So he's known, but this isn't the Bernie Mac that we know as Bernie yet. He's okay. building upon that name. Like, I don't even think he got his talk show yet. Okay, so he's still, like, he's, he's yeah, pretty yeah, unknown. Yeah, yeah. He's pretty unknown. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, no, I mean, yeah, the way I look at it, oh, it's confidence. It's what what he does it like saying I'm not I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. We kind of call that a foul ball joke. Um, it's something you do before your set, just to like address the room in a sense. Right. Um, and I like it, it's also tough to tell without seeing anybody else. But um, yeah, like him just addressing that and saying it the way he did, I think disarmed a lot of people. Right, right, right. All right, this dude's like, this dude's like, for real. This is going on. I got you. I got you. I don't think we need to, to watch the whole seven minutes unless you wanted to. Um, but it was. I just wanted to bring that up because, like, I, I was, I was thinking about that because I was like, oh, so like, what do you do, right? Like, what do you? Because like, I am someone who does want to kind of like start going to open mics. Not because I think I'm funny, but I actually think it'll be make me a better podcast. I just want to learn how to rant better. Okay. Um, I mean, with, well, with open, open mics are a different animal, man, because like, because they don't want to listen to you, and that's why I want to. I, that's why I think if like I can get you to listen to what I'm saying, it's gonna yeah. come across better on this. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't be looking for it for. It's like if it if it's funny, it's funny, but I really want people to listen. Like, fuck, did he just? I should look this up. That's more so what I'm looking for. Which is why okay. I said open micers, because it's like, yeah, it's 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 kind of like it's kind of like a comedian going to just an open mic with like bands and shit like that, getting up saying comedy. Like, okay, if I get good enough to capture during this shit, I can whatever, whatever. That's kind of my thought process with it. Well, I, uh, m- my advice would be if you're gonna go to an open mic, try to do like stand up, because if you mm. just go up there and rant, an open mic is eighty percent comics, and mm-hmm. it's. 80% comics who like I would say a majority of them are like worried about their own sets like they're not really tuned into what's going on um, and if you just go up there and rant you're going to just turn a lot of people off that are like the regular people of the scene and then when you start like if you do it regularly and you come in and you're doing that everybody will see you and be like oh fuck this guy again I got to sit through. I got you. You know what I mean? And well, it'll, I'll be honest with you. And I'm just going to be honest with you. One, I wouldn't give a, because what I'm trying to have in my mind, I wouldn't care what the rest of them are thinking. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't be that I wouldn't be trying to be funny. It's, I'm trying to be entertaining. Right. While I'm doing this. So, like, would it, it probably would feel like a little stand up esque because of the environment I'm in. And also, too, I'm thinking of doing it because of like when I'm doing like a single solo show. Okay. You see what I mean? So it's like, yeah. it, like, like it's me being able to keep you entertained. The fact that I'm talking about this whole fucking, I may want to talk about the Ukraine Russia crisis. You don't want to hear about it, but I have to make it entertaining enough that you're just like, huh, that's pretty cool. I like yeah. this fella. He made me laugh a little bit. Really made me think. You know what I mean? Like, cause that's, I'm, I'm not funny. I can't, like, I'm funny yeah. if you get me and you know me. You know yeah. what I mean? But I'm not funny if you don't fucking know me. 
and I wouldn't try to like I wouldn't try to be stand up funny because that wouldn't be my whole thing. It'd be like I'm funny just because of the way I'm going to say this and break it down. Yeah. Okay. Does that make, so you know what I'm saying? You're more you're more or less trying to be interesting. Yes. Okay. Like yes, interesting that's, and okay, like that's a different cat. Yeah. That's a different Yeah, cat. Like, I'm trying to come up there so, to have you just like, "What the fuck did this motherfucker just say and how did Oh, it's it's that's kind of funny the way he delivered it, but that's some shit. Like I he's, yeah. I'm not trying to be fun. like I'm trying to be like, "Oh, oh. you're trying to get people to think." Yes. Okay. Yes. And I and, and, and I'm not trying to be a com- like if I learn how to be funny, I learn how to be funny, but that's not yeah. my I don't think I can be. You know what I mean? Maybe. I mean, well, it's all, it's all, honestly, it's all about if you want to, like, cause even me now, like there's some shit like I'll write, like I tell you, and I think it's going to be really good and I take it somewhere and everybody looks like, we don't give a shit. Like it's, right. it, it's, so it's, I've been, like I said, I've been doing it five years and it's still touch and go for me. Um, I just have like, like I said, I, like I have a little bit more of an advantage because I'm, every like every week i'm around a group of comics who like give me input on my shit before i tell it to anybody Mm -hmm. and i I, like and i brought shit into those meetings and like i'm like yo this is really funny and Mm -hmm. even they're like dude i have no idea what you're thinking Mm. and they're nice about it they're constructive and everybody's super helpful and supportive but they're like kev i don't understand this at all because the way I see it in my head is so much different than the way everybody interprets it. And that's the hardest part of stand-up comedy to me. Mm. Mm. And that has actually been giving me my my own pause personally on just like trying to go to like an open mic, whatever case may be, just because I like if you ever see me do like a, a one man conversation with Dean or whatever, when I'm talking or doing certain things, I I I give myself a main point or a major opposition to go over. Yeah. You know what I'm saying I so that's the thing that's been giving me polls. It's like, oh, I don't know if it's, you know, if that is still going to connect with people. But the one thing that kind of gets me going, like I probably should try to do it, is that when I do certain certain content, I see certain reactions. Okay. So that's why it's kind of like, oh, maybe I'm doing something right because if I do this, no one gives a fuck. But if I do this and say it's this, then like, oh, okay, they kind of like that. Yeah. yeah you know you what I mean? Like, so... You can tap into a lane a little bit, you know what I mean? Yeah, so that's... like. So I, I would be using stand up for like selfish reasons because it wouldn't really be stand up. I'd be going up there just trying to be interesting, and then if I stumbled upon like, oh, whatever the case, I stumbled upon it. But that wouldn't be like, it'd be it'd be like fucking Keenan Thompson on fucking SNL kind of shit. Like, okay, people don't understand that like like Keenan is a is an actor who's really good at comedy. You know what I mean? So like, if I got funny, it'd be because I accidentally got funny. <laughs> Well, like, I mean, it, yeah, I guess I. Mean, you because like, I wouldn't. That, 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 that's not my my thought process. Just to be interesting, and you did. Like, I would want people to come up to me and be like, "Oh, where can I hear more of this?" Like, yeah. I just want to get more fucking black and the berry and play haters fucking followers. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, I understand. I understand what you're getting at. I understand. Yeah, you like, want to get be... you want to get in front of more people to see like how you can get reactions and stuff, and you get people to like listen. Yeah, like because okay. like the whole comedy shit that y'all do, I think it's 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 fucking crazy. Like the fact that you have to go out there. And you have this fucking set that you have to say and you memorize it. And then, like, even your fucking laughs or your nuances that, like, people think are just like you're doing it for that one show. You've been doing that fucking 70 days in a row. Maybe yeah. fucking two years in a row. Maybe three years in a row. Dude, I wrote like, a joke four years ago that I still yeah. use. Uh-huh. And, and like, <laughs> I like, I mean, I just like it. It's like, it's, it's a, like a stupid, cutesy little joke about, like, like how many condoms I've been using lately, but I say it's because I make. I've I've, I've heard a version of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I just make balloon animals out of them and stuff. So I mean, and it always like it always does decent. You know what I mean? It's like a yeah. cutesy little bullshit thing, but I like it's fun for me to tell, and like the twist on it always is like it always gets a good reaction. So, um, I forget where I was going with that, but. I think uh, I, I forgot. Oh, yeah. I, like, no, the nuances and like doing yes. stuff the same way all the time. Yeah. 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 I mean, and also, like, for me as a lower energy guy, performance is always more difficult for me. Hmm. So, like, I can tinker with a joke and like eventually put it together. 
But if I don't perform it, like if I just go up there and tell it to you like a street joke, as opposed to like performing a joke, it doesn't like hit as hard as it could. Mm-hmm. Like I have a joke about like um, like powerlifting and stuff, and uh, how I say it's about like working out childhood trauma and everything. And if I say it like the next like a, if I say the next punchline is like. Um, I love when I'm benching 325 and another guy says, yo, I hate my dad too. As opposed to like, I love when I'm benching 325 and another dude comes up and says, yo, ho, I hate my dad too. You know what I mean? Like there's a difference there. So um, it's all about, I mean, performance is huge. It's huge. Like you even look at a guy like Stephen Wright, who is as deadpan as it gets, or Mitch Hedberg, like, um, they're as deadpan as it gets, but they have little things that they do that make it a performance that like kind of spike the emotions and like take you on a little right, bit. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's another thing too, is like with what you're trying to do, you just gotta take people on a ride. That's all that's what it's all about. Yeah. I I have this like um premise and it's effectively like, um, like, because like, so in my mind, right, you go to open mic or I got like five minutes, right? So the first two minutes is getting people to know me, right? First two and a half, I would say, right? Maybe three. It's getting people to know me and I would talk about some political shit and take them. Cause I can like talk to you and take you on a political ride and get you interested in me. And then I fucking have this, like, I have this not joke, but it's like, a. A conversation piece yeah. about who I am and being with a dude who is also okay. like an alpha. It's a very interesting, like, it's a very interesting piece when you're fucking like, you know, it's different when like my ex girlfriend would be like, you should fucking do the different. You should, yeah. you should fucking do the dishes. It's a lot different from when fucking she would say it when fucking Justin says it. It's a, it's yeah. a, it, it, it gets a different response. Like, it's kind of like, what the fuck do you mean? I gotta do the dishes, nigga. Like, and he's like, you gotta fucking do the dishes, <laughs> dishes nigga. It's not my fucking turn. Like, it's a very interesting, like, oh, dichotomy. And then, especially if you ever would have seen, like, so I, I have like those two that I really want to kind of do. And actually, it's only like besides you, it's only like uh, one of the like, and, and my cousin is is one of the person I work with, an older dude that I had told like I want to do it. And he's every time he sees me, he's like, "Yo, when are you gonna go head down to do one of these open mic shits?" And I was like, "I don't." I was like, "I gotta, I gotta," because before it was COVID. Now New York doesn't give a fuck about COVID, so I gotta go fucking like see what it's at. Like especially after this conversation, like I'm definitely gonna fucking like um, I don't know. I think I think it's Tuesday. I don't know. Let's, let's, let's fucking. I'll give you an update. I'll give you an update. Let's see. Let's see what happens. I'm not doing anything on Tuesday. I think he's doing anything on Tuesday. Let's go down there, have him record me so I can at least hear what I said. If anything got a reaction, didn't get a reaction. I don't know. Yeah. I may talk a, may talk a little shit about fucking the whole political spear because I hate everybody. Yeah, okay. See, all right. I will tell you, man, like, because right now, I mean, with what I'm doing, like, I haven't been doing, like, a ton of shows lately. I've just been, like, burning up the open mic scene. Uh-huh. Um, just because, I mean, for, like, for me, that's really fun. It's super low pressure. I can take something new there. If I get reactions on stuff, I'll know it at least like tweak it a little bit, try and make it like hit harder. Um, but also with open mics, you got to be careful, man. With just like doing anything political, no matter what. Oh, I know that politics is going to piss people off, but I'm saying yeah. like the way, at least for me, because I'm a legit independent. I, the you've taught me like a few comedy rules. Mm. that i know and i know this is a big no-no but i know the comedy rules you taught me the misdirection Mm -hmm. and like you know kind of setting shit up whatever the case may be like yeah it's like really like you know beginner shit but the way that i like talk about because the way that i talk about fucking politics is like i hate everybody yeah so i'm i am i don't i don't Uh, yeah i don't care (laughs) <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Like, and, and then also too, I would love to piss somebody off there. Yeah. All right, okay. Okay. All right. That's what I was gonna tell you too. Like, I hate everybody. Yeah. Because like I, if I think... like if you're gonna go over and smack like 
like somebody on the right oh. side of the room, you got to go smack somebody on the left side. Listen, of the room just listen. Out, you know? Let me tell you something. I think because the biggest thing with me is like, and this is, you know, fuck it. I, once again, people, this episode has turned into for me after fucking like forty five minutes. So if you're still here, we're gonna have some really interesting <laughs> conversations. <laughs> like, like just me asking, <laughs> just being honest. <laughs> <laughs> right, like, you know, this, you know, this, forty four minutes kind of came in for me asking, like trying to figure this shit out. But like, this is what I'm thinking of personally because of who I am. I feel as if I come out of the political sphere, excuse me, coming out like in an open mic, five minutes, right? In my first three minutes, the first minute and a half is me fucking kind of like dominating Dems. And making it, like, a little uncomfortable for them, but, like, you're getting, like, the old red boys happy. And then I'm able to do a smooth transition because everything in politics is a smooth transition. Right over to dumping them on their fucking heads, right? Then you're getting them to laugh a little bit, but then you're getting the people on the left who are still pissed off. The right pissed the whole room off. And then... <laughs> once, uh, I'm sorry, you go better ahead. have an exit strategy. <laughs> yeah. <gonna> do- <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I'm pissing... Well, 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 excuse me. When I say pissing people off, I'm not... I'm not going to like go over the edge to piss them off. But for instance, I could easily bring up. I can. I can easily connect Ukraine. And I can easily connect the Black Lives Matter fucking protest shit. In regards to the actual interpolitics of it. Easily, easily. I, no, no. And my, only, I mean, I'm not trying to be funny. Duffy. My comedic advice. I'm not trying to be comedic. <laughs> Remember, this is like a conversation with Dean in person. So I don't know if you ever seen it. I know, I know, but uh, I'm not my, trying to be my funny. advice. Don't do oh, it. I, and then if you dead set on doing it, write it out. Write it out first. I got you. I got you. Um yeah. I will say this though. It is it is absolutely gonna happen. Something political. <laughs> Uh, no, because it, it just it just fucking has to. It just it just it, it just fucking has to. It would have to be something. I obviously couldn't go that heavy right now. Um, no, no, don't. Oh, God. But I think it would be for me personally. I think the easiest thing for me would be just to talk about when I talk about politics. When I get into it. Just to be talking about the shit, I would just, I would just look at past conversation with Dean episodes. So I would probably more so go into like deep state shit. So like I would probably more so talk about like, hey, because like anything I need to say has to like in in what conversation with Dean talks about the right and the left, how you're how they're both the same person, because they are. Like you you people hate each other for no fucking reason. Because yeah, yeah. we should hate both of you. You yeah. both actually fucking suck. And let's give examples. Actually. What you really should do is try to like if you really want to like gain a bigger following, is you should try and do traditional stand up. You should get like go to traditional stand up. So many people did that. That's how like so many people have a following in the entertainment industry. No, no bullshit. How like, would I get good at stand? Oh, I guess I would go to class. There's like, I don't know, is there classes around here? And shit? Like, how do I, I guess I would go to open mic and just try, right? Just fucking listen. I'm sure see what there goes is, on. man. Like, the, I mean, like, look on YouTube. You can ask me. Like, I'll tell you what I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do my, I'll do edits on your shit if you want. Like, huh. I, I, that's another thing too. Like, interesting. Which is wildly, I think, to some people, like who just haven't been in it that long, like comics help each other all the fucking time Mm. so and i was like this when i first started like i didn't want anybody's help i just wanted to do it on my own and i paid the fucking price but (laughs) (laughs) i've been booed out of a few rooms um how the fuck does that like what what happened like what goes through your body when you hear a boo oh dude it's it's the loneliest feeling on the face of the earth um Actually, you know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story about it really quick. Um, I was doing comedy for like six months. I would go out and get a couple laughs and thought I was like hot shit. And I hit up one of the like the producers of a room and he gets like he gets like pretty serious people to come headline. Like I remember the night I went, Tony Woods was the headliner. And Tony to like Tony Woods is like 
Yeah, yeah, dope, yeah, 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 yeah. Dope comic. He's been around for a minute. And uh, like the dude who produced the show, he does, he does like a radio show around here. His name's Tone X. He's a super nice guy. I just hit him up on a whim and he goes, dude, roll through. And I'm like, all right. When there, I went there, he goes, yeah, you, you comfortable with five? I was like, yeah, I got five. Like, and in my mind, I was like, yo, I'm going to kill these people for five. Like, it's going to be sick. About a minute and a half in, I knew, like, that was not, like, I was nowhere near where I thought I was. Wow. It was, like, pin drop quiet. Like, you would have thought motherfuckers were taking the SATs up in there. And at one point, like, I kept going, and I started getting booed. And, like, Tone X knew, like, he knew I was, like, fresh fresh like super new and he like stood up and he was telling people to like shut the fuck up and like sit down and stuff which i like you know thank god it it, yeah but doesn't that make but, it even worse no no it was actually like it was cool like he was he was cool because like, he kept telling me he's like do your time just do your time man like it's cool do your time uh, um and i did and like obviously i mean it was not like it wasn't like I wasn't like thrilled. Like I didn't go home and like revel in it or anything, but I learned a, I learned a fuck ton from it, man. Like and what one did of the you other, learn? I, <laughs> you're not gonna learn comedy in six months, I'll tell you that much. Um because right. I I mean I got off stage and Tony Woods went up fucking killed, you know, just because I mean he's a pro. Of course. You know, you, like and it, and that's one of the things like as a, as a newer comic stage time is really important but actually going to live shows is really really important like you learn so much more from watching like a pro do it as opposed to like you going to an open mic with four people at it and like telling some jokes you know mm. Mm. it's interesting interesting yeah I still don't think I could ever be a stand-up comedian, um, but we'll have conversations off air about this a little bit more. Um, listen here, people, we're gonna have Duff back. Um, yeah, I know we've been trying to do episodes between forty-five minutes to an hour. Like I said, after forty-five minutes, it kind of was like about me asking questions, shit like that. If you stay through it, appreciate you. If you don't like it, don't give a fuck. But I am gonna ask you to do this: like, share, subscribe. This bad boy. Leave a comment, even if you fucking hate it. Um, you know what I'm saying? Give it a five star rating. If you don't like it, do not fucking break the goddamn shit. But you can comment. You know what I'm saying? You can comment your fucking hatred. I meet you there. Um, Duff, is there anything that you want to tell the people or where they could potentially see you, even as open mic if they are fucking goddamn south of the Mason Dixon? Oh, dude, just like around Charlotte. There's a place called Crown Station. I'm at pretty regularly. It's every Wednesday. Um, they just started up a really good room. This is the room I was at last night at uh this restaurant called the war mac mm -hmm. um we have another really really fun open mic at uh this place called penthouse my friend gail murray runs that um and there's i mean there's more and more just popping up all the time um mm -hmm. so i mean that's just like where i frequent right now listen go ahead and check the man out you already know where to check me out at Fucking Sunday shook me on the goddamn player haters on motherfucking Monday. Excuse me, Sundays 11 a.m. On Mondays 8 p.m. Check me out with motherfucking Zen Chaos. Maybe on Wednesdays you can check me out on the Low Sports Show. You also can always check me out on Black and Berry on Thursdays as well, and maybe on Saturdays I will. You know you I, you may see me on Jays and Joes. All that's on the Black and the Berry Network, except for on the Player Haters Podcast. Uh, you can go to the YouTube machine and the Facebook machine. You can see me and Craig Mack. Uh, listen here, people. Appreciate your time. I appreciate your time, Duff. I can't wait until we're doing this on larger fucking scales. Uh, this is going to be fucking hilarious. We live a fucking good life now. We're going to live even better lives later. Fucking don't even worry about it, people. You guys right now and gals in the beginning of this whole damn thing, trust me, you're going to fucking love where this whole damn thing goes in a fucking few goddamn years. Peace, love, and chicken. This has been Conversations with Dean, with Duff, and we appreciate you. We are out. <laughs>